Well, welcome everyone. We're so glad that you came to our presentation. So whether you're joining us live or you're watching the recording, we're so glad that you took the time out to learn more about this amazing cruise to Alaska. Um, I am Suzanne Clausen, and I am joined by my husband, Steve. If Steve, if you could wave, so, or not wave, you got to speak up or it won't show I, you. I waved. <laughs> now I'll talk so and wave. We are the co-owners of Cruise One in Shallow, Arizona. Arizona. And we're joined by Whitney Heed, who is our um, right-hand woman at Holland America. So say hi, Whitney. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here. All right. So, so uh, let's go ahead and get going and talk about this amazing cruise. Okay. Our theme for tonight is you deserve more. More of Alaska and more perks on board. And we're going to show you how we're going to... Uh, take care of you with, with all of our special perks and promotions and what an immersive experience in Alaska this 28 night cruise is. So on tonight's agenda, um, we're going I'm going to introduce Whitney and she's going to reveal why Holland America is absolutely your best choice for your cruise to Alaska. And then Steve and I are going to share some of our personal experience in Alaska, our personal experience with Holland America. And then we'll also I think even before we do that, we're going to go over the, all the details of the itinerary. So you really get an idea of what you get to see and do on this amazing Alaska cruise. And then finally, we're going to go over our exclusive pricing and perks that we have just for guests who are booked through our travel agency. So I'll tell you a little bit about us. If you're new to our agency or maybe maybe found us through our advertising for this event, or maybe we're referred by friends, I want you to know that I built strong personal relationships with all of my clients. Um, I'm happy to talk to my clients about their cruise plans, their dreams, uh, what their travel goals are. And most of my growth in my business has come from repeat clients and referrals. And with me, clients are never a transaction. You're always, a, I'm always very engaged with everything to make sure you have an exceptional cruise vacation. I have been cruising for over 45 years. Uh, this is I, my little three-day Bahama cruise that I did in 1975 when I was just eight years old. And I, um, Steve and I are avid travelers ourselves. We have been on many cruises. Um, we Since uh, coming out of the uh, pause in 2020 and 2021, we have taken uh, average about 12 to 15 cruises a year for the last three years. It is something that we are blessed to do because with the way the Wi-Fi and the internet works, we can run our business from anywhere in the world. And we invest in that travel experience ourselves so that we can then share that personal experience with our clients and help them to have exceptional vacation experiences. That's our goal is to help you just have the best cruise experience possible for you. Uh, we love Holland America. Uh, we have been partnering them for many years because we took our honeymoon over 30 years ago on Holland America. And we recently have sailed a 24 night. We just did a Panama Canal cruise with them this year and a 28 night transatlantic. So we have lots of experience with the product too, which helps us to be able to answer many of your questions when it comes to specifics about Holland America. Uh, something to let you know about the advantages of working with our agency. Um, I work on my client's behalf. I have lots of training and experience. I hold a master cruise counselor certificate from Cruise Line Association International and their more prestigious uh, level of training and certification and elite cruise counselor. Uh, I like to believe that there is a cruise line for everybody. And that's my job as your travel advisor to make sure that I match you up with the perfect cruise for your wants and needs. And I'll tell you the best kept secret in travel, your price, whether you book through a travel agency or through the cruise line is going to be the same or better through the travel agency because the commission that travel agents earn is built into the price of the cruise whether you use one or not. So if you're booking directly with the cruise line, you're actually paying for the services of a travel professional like me and not getting it. Now, in this case, our price is really good because I took out this group allocation a year ago when this sailing was first released and I locked in the launch pricing 
And because it's selling so well, it's only gone up since there. And I'll show you what a great savings I have for people that are booking now, um, as opposed to people who booked, you know, exactly a year ago. Um, anyway, I'm easily accessible. You can reach me by phone, text, email. Uh, I try to make myself available almost 24 seven. I do have to sleep sometime, but if I, I know my clients are especially having an emergency, I'll get up early to call them in Europe, that kind of thing to make sure they're taken care of. Now we're going to talk about more perks on board Holland America. This is absolutely your best time to book your Holland America cruise because they are still offering the have it all plus promotion and Holland America doesn't offer this on every ship and every sail date. This includes the regular have it all benefits of the elite beverage, or excuse me, the beverage package, but with have it all plus you get the, the premium elite beverage package. It also includes crew appreciation or, fr or free prepaid gratuities, as I sometimes call it. So you're going to, you don't have to worry about the gratuities for the, for the hotel staff on the ship or the dining staff on the ship. Uh, you get the upgrade to the premium Wi-Fi, which in our case we love because we work while we're on the ship. You get uh, uh, $300 per person in shore excursion credit, specialty dining, and of course a low price guarantee. And I will, like I said, at the end of the presentation, I'll show you where our pricing is. So I'm gonna turn it over to Whitney from Holland America. And I wanna just tell you, Whitney, is so is my business development manager at Holland America, and she has been so instrumental in helping me make sure that my clients are taken care of. We rarely run into issues with Holland America, but if something does come up, I know I can reach out to her. She's going to help me resolve it. She's going to help make sure that from when I first do a presentation to my clients till their return, that any support I need from Holland America to help the client, she is going to make sure that I get that. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Whitney, and she's going to tell you why Holland America does Alaska like no other cruise line. Awesome. Thank you so much, Suzanne. And I just kudos to you putting this, taking this group out right when we launched last year because this is an amazing, amazing sailing. And we love partnering with you and Steve and your guys' amazing expert knowledge of your agency and travel. So thank you so much for the great partnership. And with that, yeah. hello everyone. I am Whitney Hyde, a business development manager at Holland America. I'm based in San Diego and I've been in the industry about nine years now. So it's a little bit about me, but let's dive in to Holland America. So first, a little bit of our history, just in case you've maybe never sailed with us before, but we have been around 151 years now. And with that, we started in Holland, so Rotterdam specifically. And the America part is because we started doing the transatlantic crossings. That's how we came to be, Holland, America. And Alaska, oh, Alaska is our number one. So in 1947, 77 years ago, we started sailing to Alaska, the first cruise line to make that jump from Europe, from Caribbean. We knew Alaska had it all for us, so we went there, and so we think we're the experts. We've been there longer than anyone else, and so we're really excited to start offering these longer voyages normally, and we'll see that later in this presentation. It's those seven nights, but now with this 28 days, we're really excited. So with this, this kind of helps gauge like what's the best month to go. It's one of the most uh, questions we get the most, right? May through October, we're in Alaska. You guys are going to be going in June. So a lot hits that in June. And I will say, Best Glacier at Coveen is, it says it's not June, but I was last, I was in Alaska last year and I saw a lot of Coveen in Glacier Bay. So that one I feel like could also be in June. Um so you've got it all, you know, best whale watching, the bald eagles, great weather. June is a great time to be in Alaska. Now, again, why choose Holland America? Well, one, I'll talk about, again, the history. We've been there the longest. We know what we're doing. And with that comes some really great perks, like more Glacier Bay passes than anyone else. I believe last year we had 93 permits to go into Glacier Bay. And when what do you want to see when you go to Alaska, right? glaciers, wildlife, we've got it all. We have this great onboard experience. So it's not just about 
um, getting you to those ports of call and then traveling away. It's getting that experience on board while you're at your sea day going from port to port in Alaska. We have this new 2024 is the first time we've done this 28 day Arctic Circles uh, solstice cruise. So it was such a hit for 24. We thought let's bring it back for 25. And we just have more of those excursions and wildlife we'll talk about soon as well. So let's go a little bit more in depth, right, in our Alaska onboard experience. We really call it our 360 degree destination programming. So we've got these insightful talks on the world stage where we bring experts on board so they can talk about the Alaska experience, the pioneer women, the native culture. We, we, we go into it all and we actually have a great presentation called We Are Alaska, and it talks all about when we decided to move to Alaska in 1947 and, and the changes we've seen over the years. So there's so many great talks on the world stage. We've got great food on board that I'll definitely touch upon a little later too, where we are certified sustainable fresh. And then amazing, amazing shore excursions, more than 175 wildlife excursions in Alaska. Again, I say it, Glacier Bay is my favorite day on board. You guys have it on this itinerary. You start cruising in, and this is a national park. And I'm not sure if there's any national park passport holders here, but if you do have one, you can bring it with you. And the park rangers, they come on board about 7 a.m. in the morning, and there's about three of them. They'll take over the ship intercom. So from about 8 a.m. on, they'll tell you about the history of Glacier Bay National Park and preserve the, um, they'll help spot wildlife for you. Then we open up the bow so you can get outside, the, get very up close view of these glaciers. And if you're in a balcony, it's great too, because we'll get up and close to this glacier right here and we just rotate. So even if you're on the port side, you're going to see it because we'll, we'll move. So it's a great, great day. They're on the bow, the park rangers, to answer any questions. We also bring out hot cocoa and coffee because uh, it will get cold, even in June. Soup and pea soup. Peas, exactly. Our Dutch pea, pea soup because we love to bring in our Holland history that we have. So we have lots of different kind of um uh events for that so yes we have our dutch pea soup on the bow of the ship as well <laughs> it's really a great day my one of my favorite days on board um so here we have just wanted to touch upon those wildlife so 175 over 175 wildlife adventures and again talked about right glaciers and wildlife you want to see those orcas you want to see the otters so we have so many uh, great experiences here. And actually, I just, Alaska, like I said, it, it's our bread and butter. It's our number one. I've been there three years or three times in the last year. So I just got back in um, about a month ago. I think I got back June 8th. We had people see orcas. I unfortunately did not, but um, there were people on our voyage that saw orcas. We always see otters because I feel like those are plentiful. Um and it, I mean, it's just the best. I cannot did talk about it. Oh, did you lose me? No. Oh, you're okay. good. Okay. My loss. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, hopefully she's still there. But I, yeah, I cannot talk enough about the amazing um, animal short excursion. And I think Steve and Suzanne, you guys were talking. You've already booked a short excursion uh, to see the bears, right? Yep. Yes, we did. That's a great one. I believe in Sitka, but there are a ton in every port. Um, so, uh-oh, looks like we lost Suzanne. She's back. Oh, okay. Share your screen again. You're muted, Suzanne. Awesome. So now, perfect. So, the, here's a few of the like hot spot shore excursions um, in these destinations. So I just want to point first to Skagway. So this this is the White Pass and Yukon Route Railway. It is rated number one, and I I have gotten to do it twice now. I did it in fall and in spring. It's just beautiful, breathtaking views. You're looking at glaciers, lakes. You're in the mountains. 
it's an amazing experience and very historical because it was the uh, route that the prospectors took on their way to the Glondike Gold Rush in the Yukon. So it is a beautiful, amazing experience. Uh, Juno, if you're going to really want to do a whale watching excursion, that's your best bet there. Ketchikan has so much. Uh, we've got Creek Street and the Totem Pole Park. And then this is the Lumberjack Show, which is a lot of fun. And then Sitka, you've got, I believe you, that's when you guys are doing the Bear Sanctuary, kayaking. Yeah. There's a, I mean, and you can do kayaking in so many of the different ports as well, but these are kind of the, uh, the, just the shore excursions to do in these, in these, uh, ports to call. Oh, so here's our itinerary, Whitney. <laughs> it is a it's, good one. 20 yeah. days. It's, it's amazing. Uh, Suzanne, did you want to talk about this one? Well, I just want to say the really nice thing about it is that it is round trip Seattle. Uh, so uh, you do go to to Canada, but you don't. You're not going to have that expense of an international flight. You're going to get to see so many places that Holland America just doesn't visit on any other cruise. And this is such a nice balance because it's a balance of these undiscovered ports and the the frequently uh, uh, cruised ports. So you have lots of infrastructure and excursions for the frequently cruised ports, and then you have sort of those undiscovered untouched quaint towns that are in the more remote areas that you get to to explore and learn about on your own so really amazing itinerary yeah, and should just just sail across the arctic circle too yeah just across it just across it so there's a little bit more close up of the map and whitney join join in anytime but um i'm just going to kind of go this the um catch a can one of my favorite places to visit. I I think I've been there six or seven. Every cruise that I've been to, to Alaska has visited Ketchikan. So it's one of my favorite little places to return to. Uh, Sitka, uh, one of this is a place where they signed the treaty where the Russians uh, uh, sold Alaska to the Americans. And so there's a lot of history. There's a Russian Orthodox church there. There's a lot of native culture, and we're going to go see the grizzly bear sanctuary, but you also might go kayaking and see sea otters, or you could even sometimes see orcas in the bay. We did on our honeymoon cruise as we were entering Sitka. It was so beautiful, and there's this whole family of orcas coming in. It was it was really gorgeous. Uh, Hubbard Glacier. Yeah, we saw the Russian dancers too. Now the Hubbard Glacier. It's an advancing glacier, so it's actually moving forward uh, into the Yucatan Bay, and it's about six miles across the face, and it really is, because it's so wide, it's one of the most spectacular glaciers to sail by, and you can spot seals sometimes, like, hauled out on the, the little icebergs that are there. Uh, it calves a lot, so you might even be able to get a picture of that or at least see some of the, the icebergs floating in the water. Prince William Sound is a 10,000 square mile protected waterway with islands, it has fjords, and it has 150 glaciers in the area. And it's home to lots of wildlife like humpback whales, orcas, porpoises, sea otters, sea lions. And the coast, the, the shore there has about 30 different species of land animals, including black bears, brown bears, mountain goats, doll sheep. So some of, the, some of these really, important animals that you come to Alaska to see you can sometimes spot them on the shore there and there's over if you are further this is your paradise there are 220 different species of bears that are migratory and resident one that live live in this area and you go through Prince William Sound and you end up in Valdez and thank goodness Valdez has made a really good recovery from that um, uh, oil spill that was I think 40 years 30 40 years ago um it is a still a beautiful place. It's a place where you can see authentic Alaska. They have museums, antiques. Uh, and the first barrel of oil to ever flow through the pipeline is is there, in, like as a museum. And when we visited in 1993, we went. We did the, what these people are doing here. We did the whitewater rafting, and that was a lot of fun. Of course, we were a lot younger in, in 1993. We did the whitewater rafting. College Fjord 
it was also something that from that that's the only time I did that was on that cruise the honeymoon cruise and I just remember that the naturalist guiding us and pointing out which each glacier was and what a beautiful day it was because it was I think our next to last sea day or it could have even been our last sea day because it's only seven days but um, it's named after all the elite colleges in the northeast and uh, the professors that named it were for were from Harvard and Amherst, and they didn't name one Princeton because that was their rival. There's no Princeton Glacier. Uh, Seward's a fishing village, and it's actually at the terminus of the Alaskan Railroad, and it's also the start of the Iditarod Trail, but not the race. The race actually starts in Anchorage, but the trail goes from Seward to Nome, and it's home to Alaska's Sea Life Center, that's convinced it's not a museum, it's a center. We're going to see all kinds of animals and fish there. And uh, you can also take an excursion to the nearby Kenai Fjords National Park. Uh, Dutch Harbor is synonymous with fishing and history. It is was a World War II battleground. And it was also uh, part of the television show, The Deadliest Catch, because this is the area where some of those boats uh, start and stop. And they, they do a lot of crab fishing in this area. They also, it's the number one place for fishing for pollock and cod. Gnome. Uh, I have a picture of the doggos here because, of course, this was the, the town that was actually saved by the serum run. Uh, the children had diphtheria and they needed a serum that would uh, get rid of the toxins in their bodies, but it was the blizzard and there was no way the planes could get through. So they did a dog sled relay and they sent the serum from Anchorage to Nome. And it is an incredible story. There is a Disney movie that I, I thought, oh, this is gonna be so dumb and so fake. It's called Togo. Actually saw the movie, it was incredible. And then I looked up the actual facts of what happened in that serum race it was all true i was like oh my gosh that was all true so really good movie if you're interested in learning a little history about dog sledding and the history of gnome and the dog togo that led the the sled pack it, uh, when we visit here we might have a chance to see there's some arctic musk, musk oxen here uh in the town they have things like native arts and uh, you can even have, so goes, there's a little museum with a presentation about the Bering Sea Land Bridge, which is during the last ice age, how, how people moved from Asia to North America. So lots of interesting history in, in Nome. Now, the Arctic Circle is located at 66 degrees north, and the ship is planned to go up there and take you across the Arctic Circle. Um, there won't be a line in the ocean you'll just have somebody tell you and then i'm sure they will give us certificates because every time i've done something significant with holland america i get a certificate that tells me you cross the arctic circle uh, they also even uh on the ship in the pool they do polar plunges so <laughs> you don't get out and jump in the ocean but you can in winter inside the arctic circle you can jump in the pool and say you did a polar plunge uh, kodiak is a, a hundred mile long island and it's Alaska's second largest, largest island, Alaska's largest island and the second largest island in the U.S. And this is a great place you can see bears here, um, ocean fishing, kayaking. There is a Russian Orthodox church in town. It's known as the Holy Re Resurrection uh, Cathedral. And it has those beautiful onion domes that the Russian Orthodox churches are known for. Anchorage. So Anchorage is the largest city. It's not the capital. Juneau is the largest city. It has... Uh, 300,000 people living in it and we overnight here. So that gives you the opportunity to go further inland and further ashore. On a really clear day, you can see Denali National Park from Anchorage. So you might be able to see it if we have clear weather. There's so many things to do there. There's a state park that borders the city. There is a Native Heritage Museum, Aviation Museum, and of course, aviation is such an important part of the history of Alaska because those float planes were everyone's connection with the outside world. Uh, so that's important. And then there's even, um, you can do things like fishing, shopping, hiking, lots of fun things in Anchorage. And there is even a fishing hole, a river right downtown where you can rent everything to go fishing. You can rent your waders, you can rent your, your boots, your equipment, you can get your $15 out-of-state fishing license. So you can actually go fish the waters of downtown Anchorage uh, when we're stopped there. Uh, 
Homer. And I actually have a really good friend that lives in Homer now, and she's posting pictures all the time on Facebook of all of just how beautiful Homer is. And it's a small town, only 5,000 residents, but they have some of the best views of any place in the world. And it's home to this place. It's called the Homer Spit. It's this little peninsula that sticks out in the bay. And it's actually, it doesn't look like there's anything. There's all kinds of shops and restaurants and development. You can sometimes see sea otters. They live in this area. Again, you can rent a rod and reel, get that one day fishing license and go fishing there. Uh, they even have a, a bar there. It's kind of iconic. It's called the Salty Dog Saloon. So very amazing. Glacier Bay. Kim is moving talk, before we go on this cruise. It, it, she, I think she, yeah, she might be moving back to Seattle. I think she is. So I'm kind of sad to hear that. I was going to go hang out with her. Get her to come on the cruise with us. Now there's an idea. Okay. So Holland America has, like Whitney said, they've been bringing guests to Glacier Bay longer than anyone else. And it's surrounded by 15,000 feet tall mountains. Um, it was created when the glaciers receded by more than 30 miles between 1794 and 1879. So if you sailed by Glacier Bay in, in 1794, the glacier went all the way to the mouth of the bay. There was no bay. So it, it was receded. It was created uh, It's a national park. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And again, you're going to see a lot of marine life, humpback whales, orcas, stellar sea lions, which are so cute, harbor seals, sea otters, porpoises, um, and a lot of uh, uh, additions to the marine mammals. You can see sometimes large bear in the area, both black and brown. Uh, and you might even see a blue glacier bear, which is a rare color phase of the black bear. So that would be kind of cool. Um, moose, wolves, deer, mountain goats, bald eagles. So bring your binoculars because if you you might be able to spot some of these animals ashore. Uh, Juno. Oh, excuse me, Haynes. I'm sorry, I'm a Haynes. Haynes is a scenic little community on an inside passage. Uh, it's one of those little small towns, but it's adjacent to Skagway. So you can take that White Pass and Yukon train ride from here. Uh, you can drive up to Canada, which I have done before, a spectacular drive. And the mountains get so high, the trees keep getting smaller and smaller. And when, when you get to the top of the mountain, your, your, your fir trees, your pine trees are only about two feet tall and that's as big as they get. That's their survival mechanism and how they they sink down and, and hide from the cold in the winter. So amazing scenery um, if when you did it. Now we're on Juno and it's the capital. Um, this on our honeymoon, we did the, the helicopter to the glacier. It was okay. it was spectacular. That was our big splurge on that cruise. Uh, but now they have a program where you can fly a little bit higher into the mountains and actually go dog sledding. So that's something that, that you want to look into and book right away. It's one of the more expensive excursions, but everybody I know that has done it has said it was so worth it. Um, there's also a sky tram you can take up to the top of Mount Roberts. Uh, there are all kinds of restaurants in town that sell fish and chips and king crab legs. So if you want to try some of that authentic Alaska cuisine while you're ashore, it's a great place to do it. Uh, there's also a bunch of Filipino restaurants in Juneau, Alaska. Uh, so you, if you like Filipino food, you can get that too. Um, but we're in port from, uh, I believe, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. So lots of opportunities to do excursions, possibly even do more than one in the day. Uh, Tracy Arm Fjord is this spectacular fjord uh, created by the, um, I believe it's the, is it the Dawes Glacier that's in the Tracy Arm? I'm, I I may have, in, yes, it is the Dawes Glacier that's in Tracy Arm. I had to just think about it for a second. And you has all these S-curves. So every time you go around a corner, you see something different. Uh, sometimes you can see bear, deer, uh, wolves, harbor seals. Again, lots of different animals in Tracy Arm Fjord. Rangel. Uh, you'll find a scenic harbor and, and a lot of the Tinglet culture. The Tinglets have been in this area living for thousands of years, and there's example of their culture and history all over Rangel. The town has a lot of podum, totem poles, and it also has, uh, they're kind of scattered through town, so you can, you can kind of do a walkabout and see the different totem poles, but they also have some uh, 8,000 year old petroglyphs that you can go see in Rangel. So that's, you know, if you're into history, this is a great place to visit. 
Prince Rupert, again, has a lot of history of being uh, settled by humans over 5,000 years ago. Um, this is the transportation hub of British Columbia's northern coast, so visitors can enjoy lots of activities. There's golf, whale watching, nature walks. Uh, there's a canning museum in the city. And a lot of these towns are ones where, where you, you get off the ship or the tender, and it, there's a really an opportunity to just explore on your own, even without an excursion. Um, so Steve and I are Alaskan experts. We've been there six times. Um, and I've recently had two Visit Alaska training events that I've gone to where uh, different Chamber of Com Commerces have presented to groups of travel agents about all the things to do in Alaska. Um, and I'm here to make sure that you get absolutely the most out of your visit to Alaska. We're, we're going to remember... be on that cruise too. So we'll be oh, uh, yeah, so, taking yeah. care of the group. Yeah, yeah. And so um, remember this 20 night, 28 night cruise, we talked about more of everything. So you're going to get that good mix of standard ports and undiscovered ports on that. You're going to get to see uh, so many different glaciers. There's four glacier viewing experiences on the cruise, and that's not even counting the Mendenhall Glacier, which you can go visit in Juneau. Um, and there's, like, like I said, even closer to the wildlife, we booked an excursion, and I believe it's in Haines. Is that where we did it? The river, the river boat with the, we're going to go on a- I think um, so, yes. Um, a wildlife safari on a flat bottom river boat. It, it, it's like a speed boat that's open, um, almost like a Higgins boat, but there's seating. <laughs> but we're going uh, to, it's, it's a river area and you can see all kinds of animals from that excursion. Again, here's those four included glacier experiences. Uh, there is an excursion in a couple of them where you get off the big ship. I don't know if it's still available, but it, even if it isn't, get on the waiting list um, because if you can get on one of these little boats, it gets you much closer to the glaciers. Yeah, most Alaska and, cruises only have one glacier experience. We get four on this one, so four, four. Yeah, it's it's and and then five again if if you count <laughs> Juno and even six or seven if you do an excursion from uh, Seward. So there's a lots of opportunities to see glaciers. Um, and again, this cruise with so many different places that it visits, it's you're really getting a lot more Alaskan experience. Okay, so I have a little video here. Every time I go to Alaska, I see something new and that is a little harbor seal. And he has got a salmon in his mouth. And those harbor seals, this is uh, this is right before a rapid and a, and a place where the, the water goes up and the fish were exhausted. Those harbor seals were just, oh, salmon, munch, 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 having the best time. And they're so cute. You're just like, oh, those fish are trying so hard to get up the, the river and spawn, but you're just having having a feast. So the, they're fattening up for the winter. Um, something that Holland America has recently changed the name of these long extended voyages. They're now calling them legendary voyages. And they always try to have special events on these longer voyages uh, just to make them different. This is an example of some of the events that they hosted on the 2024 cruise. Of course, a lot of these things are decided by the cruise director and the schedule and what, what kind of uh, equipment or whatever they can bring on board. We just did a 20 day night transatlantic combined with a Baltic. And oh, during yes. the transatlantic part, they had like a county fair night up on the pool deck. They had all kinds of like uh, like carnival games, like uh, ring toss and rope toss and bowling. And you got to go around to these different stations, play these games. In the meantime, the waiters and everybody were walking around with candy apples and cotton candy and popcorn. It was like being in a county fair. So that's just an example of the kind of things things they do. Uh, when we left Germany on that same cruise, they had an Oktoberfest for us. They had a, a 20 piece German brass band. They had German beers. All the crew was dressed up in lederhosen and dirndls. And they had this wonderful German meal for us. So Holland America is really good about, about creating these special events for these longer cruises to keep you engaged and to make it fun and, and make it different. So every not every voyage is the same. This is the schedule that they did for the special parties on the cruise that's going on right now, the 2024 one. And you see they, they have a 4th of July party. Um, they have lots of different events that, that um, 
are going to keep you engaged and keep you having fun during this cruise. Now, the next slide is one that I that I'm answering questions because I have I've had a lot of clients that already booked on this. They're like, 28 days. What about laundry? So unfortunately, this ship does not have self-service laundry. You can either do all you can fit in a cloth bag. Okay, all you can fit in that cloth bag for $35. Or you can do what we did when we did these longer cruises. It's $8.50 per per it's it's actually per cabin. It's not per person, $8.50 per, cabin, per, per day. day yeah. Yeah, per day for the entire voyage. And so we did this on that on that 28 night cruise. We stuffed a couple things. We sent out laundry every day. And it was great because we never ran out of clean clothes. And the laundry service is really good. It comes back neatly folded or on hangers. It's 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 a really good service. So Whitney is gonna join back in. So go ahead and unmute yourself because we're gonna start talking about that onboard experience with Holland America. Because if you're gonna be on there for 28 days, like we just were, you wanna make sure that you're gonna have one, good entertainment, two, good food, and three, good service. So uh, Whitney, I'll let you take it from the next the next slide. Perfect. Um, I, I just can I say that itinerary you went through, it's amazing. Those ports of call, I mean, you're really going to those remote, areas of Alaska and ones we do not see often on well really ever <laughs> just those sailing once a year <laughs> exactly <laughs> so here we have just kind of what we're known for so really we're known for explorers as the sailing really gets you exploring Alaska the great land uh foodies which we'll talk more about and music lovers and we're really known about service so it's really about every detail every day so those guests continue to come back to Holland America, which is what we want, right? We want you to enjoy your vacation experience with us. And so, so um, perfectly sized ships too. Those midi, those mid-sized ships are great. Yes, the Westerdam's a great ship. It's about um, nineteen hundred passenger size, and it's a great ship to get again into those small ports of call. But it it's large enough to still have those different music venues and fun entertainment, but again, small enough to just get in and out of those uh, smaller ports, more remote. So here we have four explorers and in our suite cabins, we provide binoculars. So if you're not in a suite, make sure to get your binoculars. Um, I have many ones I bring everywhere because it is, you never know and carry them always because you never, if you're even in the Lido having your breakfast, uh, you'll be surprised how many things are spotted in the Lido market. Everyone's near a window watching. Um, so binoculars are huge. But yeah, we have, and we also have umbrellas in every stateroom as well. So we know Alaska can have some rain. So at least you'll have your umbrella ready, big and orange. Um, but yeah, so Alaska too, in general, is just yeah. <laughs> very much for these explorers. Well, and I would add to this is that you can do exploring that that suits your energy and fitness level. I mean, in, just in this slide alone, we're showing people kayaking, people going for a nice walk, or this lady, she's, you know, she's standing on the deck of her ship with her binoculars watching whales. So lots of, um, of different ways that you can in, enjoy Alaska without having to be, you know, running marathons every day. <laughs> And here we're very excited. So Chef Iron Chef Morimoto is now our fresh fish ambassador. So earlier you saw that kind of the uh, sustainable fresh fish. So we really take pride in the food that we serve on board. And so we've always in Alaska had this fresh, sustainable and traceable fresh fish. And so now we've made it even global. So you'll go on this right Alaska amazing cruise, but you're also, if you go to the Caribbean, if you go to Europe, you're going to still have amazing fresh fish port to plate in under 48 hours. And across the world, we're going to have over 80 varieties of fresh fish and it's all sourced locally, right? So when you're in different regions, you're going to be eating that fish. Uh, another fun, really fun Alaska specific is this glacial ice cubes. So we talked about the calving. So this will take, we work with a third party organization that takes already calved glacier ice, makes it into ice cubes that we serve in our drinks on board. Not entirely sure the science behind it all, but it, it's very delicious. And uh, 
it's certain and drinks salty. only. You're right. <laughs> it's certain drinks salty. only. It's fresh that water. You'll see a big, a big glacial uh, ice cube in there. Um, and then you'll see those kind of taste Alaska symbols on the different menu items that show that this was an Alaska product, whether it's the fish, whether it's the berries. There's a lot of different um, items that we're bringing. And I should say uh, food items on board, but the Savor My Catch program too is something that you can participate in. Juno and Ketchikan, it's a shore excursion that takes you out fishing. You catch your own fish and then our chefs prepare it for you in the main dining room at dinner that night. So it's very fun, shore excursion plus food. (laughs) Yeah, and on our honeymoon when we went to Alaska with Holland America, um, I had salmon every single day and I came home, my skin never looked so healthy in my entire life because all that, that healthy salmon fat and fish oil it really does wonders for your skin. Uh, these are just some slides that I've taken on recent Holland America cruises. They had uh, like tenderloin and fish and chips on the menu the same night. I couldn't decide. So I got I got both. I got both. The dive in has some of the best dogs and burgers. We enjoyed that on both the, uh, our well, actually all three of our recent Holland America cruises. We the dine-in was the dive-in was a regular place to visit. The Lido Marketplace is not a buffet. It is a quick service gourmet dining experience. Uh, you go up to the station. They have different stations. My favorite is the Asian station because they always have Thai curry, Indian curry, some sort of spicy meal, and they have some ball that you can you can add to it, make it spicy. They have sushi. The just amazing different stations and a variety of food and it rotates. Uh, we just did 28 nights on the sister ship of this one, the, the Zyder down. And uh, we were like, okay, when are we going to get bored of this buffet food? And we never did. It was very, excuse me, not buffet, Lido marketplace food. I got to correct myself. Uh, this is, this is the other thing, the specialty dining on this class of ship. So they have the pinnacle grill which is their gourmet steakhouse. And then they have Canaletto, which is their Italian specialty restaurant. Uh, we, again, were able to do these on that, the 28 night cruise that we just did on the sister ship. Wonderful food. We really, really enjoyed it. Uh, the Canaletto. Oh my gosh. Uh, we're like, I every day. It's, it's, it's very good. The Italian food is amazing. So live music at sea. Holland America is always going to be your best choice for live music at sea, whether it be, um, so some ships have the BB King Blues Clubs, some have the Rolling Stone Lounge. That's what I believe the Zyder Dam and the Wester Dam have. They have a seven piece band play musics from every decade. Uh, They have different sets that they play every night and some really good singers and some really cool songs that you know, so songs I had never heard on a cruise ship before. So it was, it, it was quite an experience. And my next slide, I've got to stop sharing because it has live music. And then I need to go because when I lost my, uh, my connection, I had to go back and log back in and I didn't optimize my, my video for sound. And vid. so next one is an example of the boy band they had for us. Oh, in screen, the- Suzanne. Oh, I shared the wrong screen. Oops. Okay. Stop. Wait, stop sharing. Okay. Hang on. I shared my notes, not my, okay. Hang on. (sighs) Technical errors. This one, right? That's right. Okay. Now I'm right. Correct. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So here's our little boy band we had on our, uh, one of our recent cruises. Oh, I got to hit it over here. I think. There we go. All right, so that venue is is where you're going to have the uh, guest performers, the uh, production shows starring the uh, the Step One Dance Company, guest entertainers, all different kinds of music. This, if you are a music lover, this is a great venue for you. 
And now that renowned service. We had such flawless service on, on the cruise that we just got back from. Uh, the dining experience, we were traveling with, so it was us as a couple, and then one of our good friends and his four-year-old. And they put us at a table with the most fun waiters. They were really engaging, really hardworking. And they were always bringing bread at, at the beginning of service. And we didn't really want to fill up on bread. And so one, one night I said, hey, do you think tomorrow you could bring like a plate of sliced vegetables, long skinny vegetables, and we dip it in, in ranch. And that way, when we sit down at the table, we're not eating all this bread. Every night they had it and they had it cut perfectly, just as we described long, skinny vegetables. The four-year-old will eat that. And so it was great. And then every night the meal for the four-year-old had to be whatever the entree was, but with no sauce and none of the sides on the plate, just like the fish or the or the pork belly or the steak on the plate by himself. They got it right every single night. They did such a good job. I mean, we just felt so spoiled. We didn't we didn't want to leave after that 28 days. Our our um, our wait staff was absolutely amazing. Um, and again, perfectly sized ship. I again I just got off the Zyderdam on that 28 day cruise. We love the size of the ship because you didn't feel like you had to walk too far to get to anything. It felt very, very intimate, and yet it was big enough to have enough variety of venues where you were getting uh, jazz music in one venue or the sing-along piano bar in another venue. Uh, here's a look at some of the areas. This is the billboard on board, which is the sing-along piano bar. The pool area has a retractable cover. That's where they had our county fair night and our Oktoberfest. And then there's a wonderful observation lounge. They have a whole shelf full of all different kinds of board games. So if you like to play Scrabble, Monopoly, uh, any of those classic board games, Settlers, I think they had Settlers of Catan and uh, Carcassonne. They had the games there. You just check them out and you can sit up there at the tables and play. They do have some parties up here. Uh, but it's a wonderful, versatile venue. And there is a bar and a coffee shop up there, too. And this is your home away from home. Uh, very nice pointed uh, rooms. Great, great size. Uh, this is the balcony size. Uh, you get that sitting area and the desk area and your bed and a nice balcony that you can walk out on. Uh, lively atmosphere. Uh, some people say, oh, Holland, America. Isn't that the line for old people? Well, we did we didn't feel like that at all and, and we just took two very long cruises in the last two years with holland america there was always something to do you could always stay up they had game show nights they had uh, the pub crawl oh the pub crawl was epic <laughs> i mean you run around the ship and you, it, the pub crawl was amazing you get to, a drink in every bar and then they do party games and that kind of thing so holland america you, if you are a fun loving person you're gonna have fun on holland america um, just a couple of things about, like, I like to say what's included with your cruise fare. If you've never done a cruise before, of course, your accommodations, your fine dining in the main dining room, casual dining. We talked about, uh, there's tons of equipment in the gymnasium that, you know, is there to use. They have movies on the big screen and in your room. Again, they have that nightly entertainment. Uh, every Holland America ship now has a pickleball court and they do some informal pickleball play and some tournaments. Um, again, array of activities. You can do dance lessons, cooking de demonstrations, and the all important in Alaska, they're going to have those enrichment lectures where they're going to tell you about the history of Alaska, the flora, the fauna, everything to really immerse you into the cruise atmosphere. Uh, the standard beverages that are included, no matter which rate code you book with, are going to be uh, juices with breakfast, uh, tea, brewed coffee, ice water, um, just you know it's and, and they have afternoon tea and room service all included with your with your cruise now if you book with early booking have it all you get so much more <laughs> when when you book with this program first of all holland america doesn't offer free paid gratuit free prepaid gratuities all the time and they're calling it crew appreciation it's the same thing so if you book with the have it all early booking bonus or have it all plus they're kind of the same name for the for the same thing. Uh, you get free crew, pre, crew appreciation. You get the premium Wi-Fi and you get the elite beverage package. The elite beverage package includes beer, wine, uh, specialty coffees, 
non-alcoholic drinks, mixed drinks. And Steve, help me out. What's the price point on the elite beverage package? Is it 12 or 15? Elite's uh, 15. No, elite's 20, 15. Actually. Yeah. Okay. And I just, I just want to jump in and say that this is our best value offer that we do present. And it is limited because as you can see, it says early booking bonus. So it is for those early bookers that are booking a year in advance or close to a year in advance. So I will say best value offer uh, it, and it's not around all the time. So yeah. Something and, and you get um, shore excursions included. Um, so our is 21 days plus we're going to get $300 of shore excursions per person included and specialty dining. So on this cruise, you get three nights of specialty dining um, and you would be able to, on this ship, it's either um, Canaletto or Pinnacle Grill. So I think it's two nights in Pinnacle Grill, one night in Canaletto uh, yeah. with the with the Have It All Plus. Uh, very, you know, those inclusions are, um, you know, up to $126 per day of amenities that you're getting included with the price of your cruise fare. Now, there are three different ways that you can book through me and 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 I'll I'll explain it to you. So there's the ha have it all early booking bonus rate. That's where it's in the rate code. Actually, you're not going to book you're not going to book through me for that because I have a better deal for you. But um, you get all of the inclusions of have it all. Then we also have our group rates. Our group rates are kind of stripped down. They are they are no per rates. Um, so they're deeply discounted. I, again, I took the group out a year ago when it was launched. So I locked in that pricing when it was launched. Um, so you can add the have it all to that base rate and you add it to have it all at the rate of, oh, I meant to go in and change this. It's $55 per person per day. So you get that $126 value and you only pay $55 per person more for it. And I'll show you in a second how our group rates with have it all early booking bonus added on are still way lower in some cases by over $3,500 than if you were to go on Holland America's website and book it directly yourself. So this is our special group rates. I've done examples of two different cabin types. One is the category D ocean view. So the how direct early booking bonus pricing that's coming in at $10,294 a person. Our cruise one group rate is $6,979 a person. If you add have it all plus or have it all early booking bonus to our cruise one group rate, you're looking at $85.19 per person. And that is a saving of $1,775 over booking directly with, with Holland America. Um, and then I have the example of the category VC balcony. Again, how direct rates, we're looking at $13,000 over. And our cruise one rate is at 97 um, 59 Then we add the have it all early booking bonus to it. You're at 11159 And if I did my math right, which it doesn't look like I did, <laughs> I believe that ends up being about a $2,000 per person savings. I, that math is probably the difference between the first, the first two, but with our, with early booking bonus, you're saving thousands of dollars off the Holland America rate. Um, so keeping going along this for our cruise, for those of you are attending the webinar, we have a webinar booking bonus. Um, it is for, um, people who attend this virtual cruise night and, and, or they've watched it online um, within, you got to book by July 23rd and we will add this extra onboard credit to your, to your reservation. Um, and this pricing combines with have it all early booking bonus. So this is another bonus you're going to get by booking through cruise one. And then we have one more special thing that we're going to do we're going to, you're going to be our guest for two more complimentary specialty dining meals. So you'll get to do lunch on a sea day at the Pinnacle Grill. Beautiful sit down. It's, it's a, um, it's a lunch menu uh, with gourmet burgers and, and seafood and that kind of thing. And then you get an extra night at Canaletta, which might be my favorite restaurant. I just love it. And then 
have some other surprises for our guests that, that our book is part of our group. So uh, just stay tuned. Um, I just want to mention that if the 28 night is just too long for you, Holland America does two, have two 14 day uh, itineraries. And then of course they have their standard seven day experiences, some of which can be combined with the land tour that goes to Denali National Park. Uh, they also have a program where their, their legendary journeys start and end in North America. So you can see the world with Holland America with exclusive rates. We've got discounted rates on these, just like you saw on the Alaska cruise, um, on a couple of these ones where you can see parts of the world that you wouldn't get to see if unless you flew to them any other way. Um, we do lots of group cruises. It is our bread and butter with our agency. Um, it's one of the ways that we are able to be proactive and offer our clients a better value by booking through us rather than going directly to the cruise line. We've got some escorted river cruises in 2025, one to Bordeaux and one to Southeast Europe that is a partnership with a winery. So we're going to have wine tasting on board. And then in 2026, we've got a couple of groups already taken out on Antarctica uh, Holland America, I should mention, they also do the scenic sailing Antarctica cruises as well. Um, we have got an expedition on a small 100 passenger ship where you will go out and walk around Antarctica like you disembark via Zodiacs and you walk around and you're uh, on shore. So uh, price difference is very significant between those two types of experiences. Um, but we are going back and hosting a group where we will go to Antarctica. Uh, again, we also specialize in wine lovers cruises. We've got a Caribbean one in March of 2026. I just want to let you know, we have other things in the pipeline out there. Um, Holland America is one of our number one partners. Uh, like I said, we have lots of different, different groups and discounted prices on Holland America. Uh, but to, re to summarize this presentation, 28 nights in Alaska with more of everything. You're going to get more glaciers, more wildlife, more history, more unique ports. We've got great discounts. We've got that early booking bonus. And remember, you get all those extra special things uh, included. And we've got our webinar onboard credit, depending on your bad uh, uh, category of cabin. And we've got uh, an, that additional specialty dining uh, and dinner at Cast Canaletto. And of course, you get all that plus our very personalized vacation planning experience. And Whitney, I ask you to speak to the availability of this cruise and let people know why it's important for them to book um, as soon as possible. Yes. Well, I will, you know, our 2024 one that is sailing now sold out super quick. And so anyone who didn't get 24, they booked 25 as soon as it was available. So right now we are looking very booked for 25. There is still space, but minimal. And this have it all early booking bonus will only be on for a little while longer. So now is the time to book. And now it's time to book because of the promotion and the time to book because there is not as much space left as maybe you would hope. So and, definitely. And the other thing to add is that, that if they feel like they need more space, they could, re they could recall my group allocation. Really, they give me like a week's warning. I haven't gotten that yet, but the, my, those low group prices could go away should should Holland America need to make the decision that, that they want to sell more at the more expensive rates instead of my rates. So don't wait to book is <laughs> what would be, I would say. Well, I think we've got okay. uh, 21 cabins going with us on this cruise. So it'll be, uh, it'll be a fun group too going to be a nice fun group and everybody has a sense of adventure and fun and it's always fun when you get to know people we love we love cruising with our groups i, I don't think i mentioned it earlier all right so in six let's let's move to oh, questions. It's, oh oh we're done Your okay hours it's up. been an hour yeah okay my hour's up all right we're going to move to questions so um i'm going to so go if you have ahead a question and... you are muted please unmute yourself and ask away stop sharing just so I can see everybody. So we just covered everything. I see a couple of people trying to figure out how to unmute themselves. It's in your upper right hand corner of your Brady Bunch picture. Or hold the space bar if you got a keyboard. Or hold the space bar if you have a keyboard. There we 
they were trying to leave. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if you're ready to stop book, recording. Yeah, we're going to stop the recording. If you're ready to book, just give me a call. Um, you're going to get an email uh, follow up to this webinar and all my contact information is there. So I am I'm happy to answer any questions and and go over pricing and avail availability if anybody wants to learn more and, and look at booking this because it's going to be amazing. We're, we're super excited about it.